This is Druid4574, and welcome back to another Elite Dangerous training video. Um, this is going to start a new sequence of videos in which I'll talk about different ship builds for doing uh, different activities in Elite. Um, so I decided to go and buy myself a new ship uh, just to demonstrate this. So let's do that. Buy new ship. This is fun. I'm going to choose a uh, Cobra Mark III. It's a pretty versatile ship, um, and we can outfit it uh, quite a number of different ways. Make sure I don't accidentally sell my ship. Store that. has an extra seat on there, that's handy. All right. In this video, I will uh, outfit this Cobra Mark III Mortal Wombat for carrying cargo, which is the first thing I did in game. Um, and it's one of the simplest ship builds you'll ever do. Let's start with the optional internals. And depending on the type of cargo missions you do, I ended up doing uh, community goals to make uh, most of my money and have fun in early game. And uh, for that, it was useful to have a discovery scanner on board. Um, however, that's not necessary. Uh, it will allow you to sell exploration data um, as you fly from system to system on your way to wherever you're dropping your cargo off. Um, a lot of the regular cargo missions, if you have a good enough frameshift drive, will only be a jump or two away, even fully loaded, and so uh, it's less necessary if you're, you plan to do simply those missions. But in this case, we'll keep the scanner, and uh, I like to upgrade it to use the advanced scanner. Uh, this gives your active range uh, when you actually press the honk button, if you will, once you have it assigned um, uh, to a fire group appropriately, has a infinite active range. So essentially any stellar objects or planetary objects within a system that you decide to scan will be detected using the advanced discovery scanner. Uh, the basic and the immediate uh, both have a limited range um, and it's quite limited, so any planets or uh, other stars in the system will not be detected uh, upon use if you use either of these uh, in a large star system. So, anyway, advanced scanner. So I'll just sell off that basic one here. Okay. So, it looks like this ship is already partially kitted out. Uh, as a cargo vessel. Have you noticed that we're only using class 3 cargo racks in a uh, class 4 capable module? So I'm going to buy cargo racks that are largest, uh, the largest size we can outfit the ship with. Class 4. Okay, um, they're starting it out, uh, us out with a shield generator, which is nice if you get interdicted, but not strictly necessary. We could carry quite a lot more cargo if I took it out. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to fly a ship without shields and hope we don't get attacked. It also reduces our power requirements, so that'll be handy as well. 
potentially. Okay, so we've got uh, cargo racks here. And yeah, I, there's no reason to not just get these out entirely, so let's do it. Another cargo rack here. This empty compartment. Um, I don't see any reason not to just stick another one in there. Let's do it. Actually, this may not be the best idea. So if we are keeping the advanced discovery scanner, um, that suggests that we plan to do some multi-jump uh, cargo transport. So we should have a fuel scoop on board this ship so that we don't run out of gas, which is kind of fun. Although you can always call the fuel rats. Let's see, fuel scoop. So in general, most modules that have multiple classes, um, like for example, this 2A versus a 2B scoop, I'll always use the highest class um, with some exceptions, and that is uh, that the D type is always the lightest. So if you're going for a, a lightweight module and you don't particularly care about its uh, scoop rate in this case, you might choose the 2D over the 2A. Or even go for a, a smaller class, the, the 1D for the Mac for minimum uh, uh, weight. The fuel scoop, uh, however, has no mass, um, so we don't have to worry about that in this case. I'm going to get a class 2A scoop for a quarter mil. That. That'll allow us to scoop fuel uh, efficiently. Okay, so that's the optional in, uh, internals. We've got cargo racks everywhere except uh, a discovery scanner and a fuel scoop in our smaller compartments, which wouldn't be able to hold that much stuff anyway. Only four capped out uh, with this one. So, um, we've got plenty of cargo space. Now let's make the ship flyable. We'll have to look in the uh, core internal. But before I do that, let me, let me look at these other uh, well, so let's do utility mounts. Um, I don't know that I want any, although if we do get interdicted, um, this ship is highly vulnerable, uh, especially having no shields, so it might be wise to outfit it with a chaff launcher so that we can quickly escape um, any pirates and uh, let's see. I like a heat sink launcher as well. It saved my butt multiple times, and um, if you're boosting away and trying to charge your frameshift drive, you can generate an awful lot of heat and potentially even explode. So, with a heat sink launcher, we can avoid that if we get interdicted along the way by some horrible pirates which is usually inevitable if you're carrying high-value cargo. All right, um, so let's have a look at the weapon loadout. Now, because this is a cargo vessel, um, we don't particularly care about um, weaponry. So there's a couple of options. We could either just get rid of the weapons entirely, um, just make us fast and light, it's probably wise, because without shields, we're not going to do any fighting anyway, so I'm just going to sell these. And we'll gain a little bit of jump range. Okay. So, that's everything except the core internal. So let's choose modules that are going to help us in this um, particular loadout. So we're only using about half of this class 4 power plant, so we might be able to get away with a smaller uh, class. But first, <laughs> I need to outfit the rest of the stuff here. So thrusters, we don't particularly need fast ones. Um, so. 
There's no reason to have big, heavy, expensive ones. So I'm just going to put four Class D. Those are lightweight, um, but better than the Class E. So I'll get that. Then, um, let's see, uh, on almost, well, I guess I should say really, on every ship build I have class, uh, maximum uh, size and class frame shift drive. I like to jump long distances. So I'm just going to buy it, and then we'll probably just keep this class 4A for the rest of the ship builds as well. That'll increase our jump range to 25.56 with no to modification. That is what I like to see. All right, so we don't really need sensors on this ship, but I'll put the class three on there so that they weigh less. All right, class D, excuse me. And fuel tank, uh, we'll keep that big one. That's nice. Um, power distribution, we don't need anything big there. Now it's giving us the option for smaller power distributors, and we could have a smaller one. Yeah, we just really don't need uh, a lot of power distribution, so I'm just going to take this class 1D distributor for this ship. We're not going to be doing a lot of boosting, so that's not a problem. So with the life support, I used to go for class A life support. Um, but that was before the game introduced the synthesis. Um, so now you can, with uh, very inexpensive materials, uh, refill your uh, emergency oxygen tanks if required. And so, like, having a high class life support system just is not necessary anymore. And I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think, um, well, it's nice for the long distance exploration for sure. Um, to be able to refill that. Um, so, yeah, for most of the game, <laughs> it's uh, it seems like kind of a cheat, but for that, it makes the game a lot more playable if you're going very far away. And we'll talk more about that when I do exploration builds. So I'm just going to put the class 3D on there. All right, so now... I'm going to leave the lightweight alloys as they are. Um, we want to be able to jump as far as possible. But let's have a look at this power plant. Chances are we can put a light one in here. It'll do a lot better for us. So if we put a class... Can we fit a class 3D? Class 3D definitely works for us. Um, maybe we can even go smaller. Let's have a 2D. That provides more than enough energy for this ship, so I see no reason why we should not use this. Oh wait, did I do thrusters? I don't think I did. Thrusters. Oh, yeah, okay, 4D. I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to go with a class 2D power plant. Um, and that will give us quite a jump range unmodified. All right, so there we have it, a ship outfitted for uh, carrying cargo from system to system. So why don't we test it out? So I'll make sure to fire to uh, uh, update my fire groups here, because we have an advanced discovery scanner on board, so we'll need that. Available. And then I have um, chaff launcher and heat sink launcher. I don't have to worry about 
pardon me, um, those, I have the uh, key commands assigned for those. Um, so let's see, I think V is the game's original key mapping for the heat sink launch, and a chaff launcher is the K key. Uh, cool. So yeah, why don't we take some cargo and go somewhere. I'm just going to do this the old-fashioned way and let you uh, explore how to do trading and such effectively on your own. But uh, let's see, it looks like we've got consumer technology that's significantly under, I can buy for significantly under the galactic average, so I just will choose this. Fill up that hold. Like we can hold 52 tons. Awesome. Cargo hold at maximum capacity. All right, so, um, yeah, where should we go with this? Really briefly here, I'm going to see about import pricing for um, consumer technology. Uh, not seeing a lot, so I must not know what's going on here. Oh, here we go. Why don't we go a couple jumps away? Just so we get that experience here. Dock. Okay, so let's go here. Just a couple of jumps away. Two jumps. Alright, so let's do it. See how this thing flies. I have no weapons. Uh, I'm just going to shunt all power away from them. I see no reason to have those. Get power to the engines. Ha! That's funny. So our um, capacitor does not have enough energy in it to allow us to boost. So, that's okay. <laughs> I don't think I ever had a ship that was not capable of boosting. But, we don't care. Here we go. jumps here. I haven't flown the Corbo Mark, Mark III much, but I have come up against it in combat, uh, and it's surprisingly effective uh, as an NPC combat ship. Um, I'll honk the system here. May as well just explore this star. This is pretty cool. We got a binary system. Scoop. Oh wow, yeah, that's efficient. Charge that up quickly. Looks like we could jump considerable distance in the ship without refueling, too. Alright. Fuel scoop disengaged. Frame shift drive charging. Jumping to the system now. Eight hundred 
eight seconds. So I'll max out my throttle very quickly here. like this small moon and it's like two planets or a moon and planet that are all orbiting each other and the whole business orbiting the star. I'm so used to that. Well, we can always fly the old-fashioned way. High demand. Should be able to make some money off of this. Cool. Now we're going to make enough profit to uh, pay back some of these modules. There we go. So, yeah, there we have it. Cargo vessel. So, uh, let's see, can I fly back in just one jump? Maybe, maybe. Yep, just one more jump, so with our uh, cargo racks full, it reduced our jump range significantly, but when they're empty, we can really move. But I don't necessarily need to do that on video, so this has been Druid4574, and Thank you for watching this 
cargo vessel ship build and uh, a test of that. Uh, so I'll see you next time.